more people are being killed on smart motorways, but the way the data is presented shows that that's a good thing. They don't just want their vehicles to be net zero by 2030, they want the entire road network to be net zero by 2050. How about instead of net zero carbon by 2050, how about net zero road deaths by 2050? And that's when I entered this whole new different rabbit hole. So good afternoon, I am back at my new favorite filming spot, which is parked halfway down a quay on a boat ramp that the car can just about make it out of. And the reason I like filming here is because whilst I'm talking all my rubbish, you get to watch the boats going past. And I think if I'm not very much mistaken by the noise, there's a boat going past right now. But I'm here today to film two videos. I want to talk about smart motorways and I want to talk about something else that's been brought to my attention that is going on in London. So we'll start with smart motorways. Now, an article came to my attention just the other day about the fact that national highways were moving from normal cars, internal combustion engine cars, to petrol hybrid electric vehicles for most of their fleet. Now this was on the back of a video that I had made saying that petrol hybrid electric vehicles were actually polluting a lot more than the manufacturers were telling us. So someone tagged me in this post from National Highway saying, here you go, Jeff, go to town on that. So what I intended to do was a video joking about the fact that National Highways were trying to save the environment by moving to petrol hybrid electric vehicles. And that was gonna be a kind of generic, but probably quite good Jeff video. But the rabbit hole that I actually ended up going down was a little bit different. So the article was titled, New Electric Vehicles Help Us to Cut Emissions. It was published on the 7th of February, 2023. We're continuing to supercharge our drive to cut carbon emissions with 307 state-of-the-art zero emission and plug-in hybrid vehicles. Now, this was a big press release, a big hoo-ha about the fact that they're saving the environment. Now, I'm not going to dwell too much on this because, as I've said, my research took me a different direction, and you'll see that in a moment. But the article that I would like to see from National Highways about the environment is them saying, National Highways moves to cut its carbon emissions by making sure that the vehicles that it currently owns last three years longer than they'd planned to keep them. How about that? How about don't buy 307 state-of-the-art zero-emission plug-in hybrid vehicles? How about make the 307 vehicles that you own last longer, thereby stopping the production of 307 vehicles, which is where most of the pollution comes from. Just an idea. Anyway, so that's the article there talking about, you know, as a company, we operate 1300 vehicles and they want to ex help accelerate their journey to net zero. Now, this is an interesting thing in and of itself. This video is going to go a little bit around the houses before I get to the actual point on smart motorways. So they have a plan to get to net zero, net zero by 2030. Um, our non-traffic officer vehicles will be 100% electric by 2027 and traffic officer vehicles 100% electric by 2030. So what this means is in eight years, seven years time, National Highways want to have all of their vehicles, including the ones that sit on the motorway, idling on the motorway, running up and down the motorway all day long to help people, to close lanes, to assist people, all of that really important stuff is going to be done by electric vehicles by 2030. That's just ludicrous. It's just ludicrous. The technology isn't there. The infrastructure isn't there. They don't make sense. It's an insane decision. However, when you dig into National Highway's website, they don't just want their vehicles to be net zero by 2030. They want the entire road network to be net zero by 2050. So the entire road network of Britain to be net zero carbon by 2050. And I thought that's absolutely insane because do you know what would make more sense from a net zero point of view? How about instead of net zero carbon by 2050, how about net zero road deaths by 2050? And that's when I entered this whole new different rabbit hole. So I took a quick look at some road death statistics because I wanted to understand how many people actually die on our roads and whether things have changed in recent years. Now, I stumbled upon an article from the BBC which said 38 people have been killed on smart motorways in the last five years. Digging into the data, this is from a freedom of information request sent by Panorama. 
to Highways England and it revealed that there were 38 people killed between 2014 and 2019. Now, those statistics are a little bit out of date. However, I wanted to take those statistics a little bit further. We've got 38 people within that window of five years who were killed on smart motorways. Between 2014 and 2019, so we're talking five years, there were 8,874 road deaths, okay? That's on all roads. In the UK, we have 247,000 miles of road. So there's 8,874 deaths taking place on 247,000 miles of road. That means there is one death on the road for every 27.8 miles of road network. That should mean if there's one death on the road for every 27 miles of road and there's 247 thousands of mile of road in the country and 374 miles of smart motorway, then in theory, the deaths on smart motorways per mile averaged out across that five year period should be 13.8. But the actual deaths on smart motorways in that five year period is 38. That means, statistically speaking, smart motorways are three times more deadly than all normal roads. It's a pretty basic calculation. It's some pretty simple maths to get to that conclusion, but you can see why I got there. But it gets a little bit worse. 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, all seven of those years, between 1,700 and 1,800 people were killed on the roads. The numbers didn't change a great deal. Why did that number not come down? Why are our roads not getting safer? Yes, we know that traffic is increasing. Uh, in fact, I did find a statistic to show that there had been a 16% increase in traffic in the last 10 years. But the road deaths are staying pretty much the same. Surely if our roads are getting safer and Highways England are doing a good job and the police are doing a good job and the speed limits are doing a good job, these numbers should start coming down. Now they do come down for the next two years. 2020 and 2021 are down much lower. I wonder why that could be. I'll give you a clue. It begins with L and rhymes with schmockdown. I know for a fact, as a motorist, that smart motorways are not safe. I know they don't make sense. And I'm guessing if you're watching my video, you agree with me. I believe that smart motorways are all part of a bigger picture of the new smart world that we're moving to, which is digitally tracked, okay? Cameras on the road to track where you are. Cameras in the street to track where you are. Cameras at the end of your low traffic neighborhood. Cameras at the end of your ULES scheme. Cameras at the end of your 15 minute neighborhood. Cameras at the edge of your city and cameras on the motorways. I've always believed that the smart motorway thing was never ever about road safety. So I dug into this report. This is the Smart Motorway All Lane Running Overarching Safety Report 2019. It's quite long and it's quite complex. But one thing that Jeff Buys Cars is quite good at doing is explaining long and complex data to you. So I'm going to do that. This is um, 60 odd pages long reporting on the safety of smart motorways and their all lane running system. So, you know, if you're only just realising what a smart motorway is, it removes the hard shoulder, the safety lane, and instead creates an active traffic lane. So this document tells me there has been an increase in the number of KSI incidents. KSI stands for killed and seriously injured. The KSI collision rate has increased by 0.15. However, the report says the changes were not statistically significant. The results show the overall performance of the all lane running schemes evaluated has improved. What? More people are being killed on smart motorways, but the way the data is presented shows that that's a good thing. Stay with me on this one because it is a little bit convoluted. I've got lots of post-it notes for sections that I want to highlight because there's a lot that we don't need to look at or that perhaps is too complicated. So let's take this as an example. Right. 
Collision types and causes. So they break down three different types of collision on a smart motorway. You've got a shunt where two or more vehicles are involved. Uh, vehicle one had a point of impact on the front or back and vehicle two had a point of impact on the back or front. So it's literally a shunt. Someone's gone up your backside, basically, or you've rammed someone. Then you've got a side swipe, two or more vehicles involved. One vehicle had a point of impact on the near side or off side. So we're talking changing lane problems, basically, with a side swipe. Or someone's lost control and gone across the carriageway. And then we have a single vehicle runoff. One vehicle involved, no pedestrians, no carriageway hazards were present. That's basically just going off the side of the road. Now, in the old days, you'd go off the side of the road and end up on the hard shoulder. In the new days, you go off the side of the road and you end up in a field or a barrier, if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, something much harder. What the statistics show is that shunts are down 22%, side swipes are down minus 3%, and single vehicle runoffs are down 40%. So we do have decreases in those type of crashes. However, other, with an asterisk, uh, other type of collisions, including head-on collisions, single vehicle collisions that did not result in the vehicle leaving the carriageway, are up 11%. So swings and roundabouts. Shunt collision rates as well is quite interesting because then it breaks down which section of the smart motorway they're talking about. The M25 and the M6, they're down quite significantly. However, the M1, junction 39 to 42, and the M5, junction 4 to 6, there's no change, virtually, in the amount of shunts. In fact, the amount of shunts on the M5, junction 4 to 6, this is a stretch of road I know really well, increased. It didn't decrease, it increased when they put in smart motorways. That gives an overall figure of minus 22%. But what I'm finding with this report is all of the figures are skewed by one main motorway. So the M25, for example, has had a lot less crashes but the impact on most of the other smart motorways are negligible or there's a worsening as i've said if we then look at single vehicle runoffs once again we have the m25 there's a significant decrease from 15 to 5 but the m6 and the m1 there's no previous data so there's nothing to compare it against so overall you'd think they had something to say, but the data doesn't seem to be there. The M25, there's less shunts. The M1, hardly any difference. The M5, hardly any difference. But overall, they claim it's a 40% decrease. But it's not, because two motorways don't have the stats. Moving on again, and this is an interesting one. This is the one we all want to know about. Collision rates due to breakdowns in live lanes and places of safety. Right, a breakdown in a live lane is when your car cuts out and there is nowhere for you to go. If you've ever been in a broken down car on a smart motorway, and I have twice, it's the most terrifying place you could ever possibly break down. Live lane breakdown collisions have gone from 0 0.6 to 2.5. That is a significant increase. At the same time, there's been a decrease in breakdowns in places of relative safety. So overall, the live lane breakdown collision and places of relative safety matrix is up by 2.54, which on this graph is a huge amount. So what that means is more people are breaking down on active motorways. And because there is no refuse lane, it's more dangerous than ever. This bit is very interesting. The rate of live lane breakdowns against the generic hazard log prediction. Highways have a number for how many live lane breakdowns they expect, and it's three. It's 0.35. Now, all of the motorways rank lower than 0.35, but what this means is someone, somewhere, sat down and worked out the maths, and they figured how many people were going to break down in a live lane, and using statistics, they worked out a number that was going to be okay. That basically means that they knew that these smart motorways were going to be dangerous and they knew these smart motorways were going to kill people. But now they've worked out that it's slightly less than they expected. So it's all OK. How is that acceptable? 
I really don't understand how that's acceptable. I've read the data and I've been on smart motorways. And I think being on smart motorways is more important. OK, so, yes, you can argue that people are paying a bit more attention because there's more signs. Yes, you can argue that active speed limits work and people do pay more attention. And there's less crashes that way. But it only takes you five minutes on a smart motorway to realise that having nowhere to park your car if something goes wrong is extremely dangerous. I will do another video on um, smart motorways because it's quite a complex subject and it's very touchy for people. It's very sensitive because people have lost loved ones. And if I'm going to do a proper video on smart motorways, then I really want to do it right. I'm also going to cut this video short because the light has gone crazy. Look at this. We have sunlight now. This morning it was too foggy to film. And then after that, it was too rainy to film. And now it's too bright to film. Welcome to England. Finally, let's finish on a semi-funny note after establishing the fact that Highways Agency did a risk assessment, worked out how many people were going to die on smart motorways and then decided to implement them anyway. Let's look at compliance with red X signals. This is when there flashes a red X on a gantry. That becomes the speed limit. And I've got some data here on where our most compliant motorways are. So coming in in first place at 97.1% is you people on the M3. Well done. You are very compliant with the speeding signs on the gantries. However, in last place, two in last place, they're very close to each other. We have the M1 between Junction 32 and Junction 35. And the M5 between Junction 4 and 6. I'm sorry, that was me. Bringing the compliance down across gantry signals for the entire smart motorway network system by consistently driving slightly too fast through the average speed limit sections. I just figure there's 10% leeway. But that probably means on a camera somewhere, I'm flagging up as non-compliant. And judging by the way the new digital world is going... That won't be the only system where Jeff buys cars is flagged as non-compliant. Thank you very much for watching what was actually quite a complex video. Um, I hope it made sense. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you've had an experience on a smart motorway. And let me know if you knew about the report or had read the report. Because I had a quick look on YouTube and I couldn't find anyone that had digested it. A few people have done videos on smart motorways, but not talking about the actual safety report that's out there. Also, bear in mind... That's out of date by three years. Um, I travel on smart motorways quite a lot. I don't like them. I think they're dangerous. I hate the fact that there's cameras everywhere. And if there were cameras everywhere, then there should be no deaths. It really is that simple. But from what I understand, that's not the way it works. I could have done a video on the reaction times and the fact that the cameras are never working and the fact that people in the offices have become whistleblowers and people have said, you know, if you've broken down, just pray. That's pretty much all you can do. Um, and all I can advise is get the hell out of the car and into the field that's next to you because you're just a sitting duck if you're on a smart motorway. Good luck. Right. Thanks for watching. As usual, let me know in the comments your thoughts. I'm going to move to somewhere a little bit less weird spotlighty for my next video on some craziness that is going on in London that is worse than you, Les. Thanks for watching. Jeff buys cars. Still YouTube's most boring car channel.